Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Praise God. He's waking us again. He's given us that opportunity to say, you are my God. You are my Lord. You alone will I serve because you alone are who I need in my life. Praise God that he has provided us with a free will opportunity to choose to serve him rather than to serve ourselves or the prince of the power of the air. We're thankful that God has drawn us to him and revealed himself to us through his word. And we come this morning to study his word so that we might draw closer to him. We might perceive his spirit speaking to us and we might follow him more uh, closely so that we know we don't sin against him. The purpose of studying God's word is to improve our relationship to him. His relationship to us is already perfect, but we need to improve our relationship, our understanding, our senses, the sensitivity that we have in the spiritual realm to hear from God and to follow him. We need to know that this is God speaking when we read his word and when the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit, revealing truth and wisdom to us. So let's go to God in prayer before we start our lesson today. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning wanting to know more about who you are. We know that you're the creator. We know that you've created everything that exists. We know that you are the ultimate power in all of creation, that there's none more powerful than you, none above you. You are Lord. You sent your son as savior to pay for our sins. And you commission us to declare your good news to all who would hear. And Lord, we need to understand how to stand, to stand as a Christian and declare that we will follow you and you only. Help us understand that, Father. And I pray in your son's name that today we learn a little bit more about how to walk and stand with you so that we might not sin against you and that we might sanctify ourselves to you and you alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So. Now, today's daily devotional is uh, from the book of 2 Samuel, uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. It's titled, David's Kingdom Expanded. Okay. Chapter 5, verse 1 through 12. And it says, Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou wast he that ledeth us out and broughteth us in. Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the leaders of Israel King came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. 
David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is the city of David. And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter, and smiteth the Jebusites, and the lame, and the blind, that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo and inward. And David went on and grew great. And the Lord God of hosts was with him. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David and cedar trees and carpenters, and masons, and they built David a house. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. So David's kingdom was expanded, and David recognized that it was by God's will that he his kingdom was expanded and that he received favor over his, his neighbors and his enemies. Um, if you have a relationship with God, you should be um, perceiving the same things. Okay, our lesson Section 1B, Ministry on a Desert Road, Book of Acts, Chapter 8, verses 26 through 33. And they read, <clears throat> And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? So the commentary says, These verses describe Philip as an evangelist who was prepared to do the Lord's bidding anywhere and at any time, even to be used to witness effectively to a spiritually hungry stranger on the lonely Gaza road. Philip's obedience was prompt and complete. Although perhaps perplexed at this sudden change of plan, he arose and went. Instead of preaching to crowds, as he had been his, as had been his privilege in Samaria, he was now to preach to one man. A task no less difficult, and no less important. As soon as Philip came to the Gaza road, he found a covered wagon moving in a southerly direction. 
in this wagon was seated the treasurer of the Ethiopian court. It was common in the eastern countries to employ eunuchs as government officials. Although some think he was a Jew who had made his home in Ethiopia, he was very likely a native African who had become a proselyte to Judaism. This dignitary was returning from a Jerusalem pilgrimage. pilgrimage. <clears throat> Pilm, Pilmrich, and was occupied in reading aloud the Greek version of the messianic prophecy of Isaiah when Philip found him. The fact he had traveled about 1,200 miles from his native country to worship in the capital of Judaism indicates his inner hunger for a spiritual satisfaction that his position, honor, and money could not buy. His reading of the Word of God had intensified this hunger, but this passage had perplexed him and had created a desire for a true interpretation. The Lord had prepared an interpreter and had sent him to the side of the inquirer so this uh, Ethiopian eunuch traveled a long way to Jerusalem to um, to seek um, wisdom or knowledge about uh, this God that he heard about, that he was reading the Old Testament, trying to understand this, this religion, because he was seeking uh, wisdom of God. And so God saw him and sent an interpreter to um, explain to him the gospel. That's what we're to do. We have to be that interpreter to explain the gospel to those that uh, are seeking information or seeking a spiritual relationship with God. All right, section 1C, Impromptu Baptism. The Book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 34 through 40. And it says, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But Philip was found at Astos. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. The commentary says the theme for Philip's witnessing to this man was simply Jesus. Whether or not this Ethiopian had ever heard of Jesus is not known. But that he now had heard an exposition of Christ the fulfillment of the suffering servant, Isaiah 53, 7 through 8, his heart was moved to believe, for it was Jesus and no other who suffered silently and unjustly and offered his life and death for sin. Philip's words in Acts 37 indicate he was satisfied with the sincerity of the Ethiopian's testimony. So, water baptism was in order. When they came to some water, the driver of the chariot was ordered to stop. Philip and the eunuch going down, both into the water, verse 38. 
is in harmony with baptism by immersion practiced in the early church. While human feeling may have moved Philip to accompany his new convert with further instruction, a stronger and irresistible impulse from the Spirit of the Lord led Philip to an abrupt and immediate departure. Verse 39 through 40. The Lord had other plans for his witness and other places for him to work. Philip next appeared at Astos, and from there he headed north along the coastal road, preaching the gospel in the cities through which he traveled until finally he reached Caesarea. So the apostles and the early church believers um, were led by the Holy Spirit to go out and preach the gospel, um, to spread the good news, um, to begin to um, gather uh, those who would believe and receive Christ and become members of this new church. And even today, we're still commissioned by God to be that salt and light, declaring the goodness of God and his redeeming work of salvation on the cross at Calvary for the souls of his creation. Um, I'm going to stop here. God willing, uh, I'll be here tomorrow morning to continue this week's lesson. Um, I pray that it's encouraged you in some way to seek a closer relationship with God through study and prayer. Um, I pray that this day is a blessing to you, that you receive from God what he has for you. And God willing, we will talk again tomorrow. Thank you and have a great day.